If you're looking for some simple inspiration, in this video you'll find some watercolour painting ideas which use very simple wet techniques. You might be wondering what I mean by wet techniques. In watercolours the colour pigments are held in suspension by the water you use to dilute the paint. While the surface of the paper is damp or your brush marks are wet, the pigments flow and disperse in ways which sometimes seem unpredictable until the water evaporates and the pigments settle onto the sheet. This is one of the characteristics of watercolour that make it so unique. The following easy step-by-step -step watercolour ideas will teach you a few things about the way the wetness of the paint and the paper affects the way the colour pigments flow. It's not easy coming up with new ideas for painting, but one of the best ways to find inspiration is simply to find time to play with colours and enjoy the beautiful characteristics of watercolour. And one of the most interesting things about watercolour paint is the way different colours blend and diffuse in wet situations. Most of you have probably heard of the watercolour technique known as wet on wet, but there are various ways to exploit this method of painting and the way colours combine when they're still damp. And all of them produce amazing and fun results. Each of the painting ideas in this video make use of wet paint in different and playful ways. You can download the template and reference images for painting these subjects by following the link below this video, or simply use them as inspiration for your own interpretations. One of the best known wet on wet techniques involves dampening the surface of your watercolour paper before you apply a layer of paint, hence the name wet on wet, because you are applying wet paint to a wet surface. This technique is ideal for painting these fuzzy watercolour birds. Start by taping down your sheet of paper onto a flat board. This will help the paper to stay flatter when you apply water. The first step is to brush the whole of the surface of the sheet using clear water. For this I use a large hake brush. A big brush like this is ideal for adding large amounts of water or for painting quickly. Keep brushing the surface with vertical and horizontal brush strokes to make sure the whole of the sheet is evenly dampened. Mix up a bright colour from your palette and start painting an oval shape. Notice how quickly the paint spreads outwards when the paper is very wet. Add some more paint to the centre of the shape to strengthen the colour. One of the attributes of wet on wet painting is that the paint tends to appear lighter than wet on dry techniques after drying because the surface water dilutes the paint slightly. Mix another bright colour and paint a second shape. Work quickly so that the surface of the paper is still damp and the pigments disperse on the surface. Mix up a darker colour to paint the underbelly of your imaginary birds. Here I'm using a dark purple colour which is the result of mixing the blue and red paints together. Like this the dark colour is in harmony with the original brighter hues. Next I use a lifting technique to lighten a small part of the shape. I do this using a blotted brush so that it picks up some of the colour from the paper. Lifting can also be done when the paint is dry, but this technique works much better when the paint is still wet. It's a very useful method for varying the colour intensity and values in watercolour painting. Notice also that the surface of the paper is starting to dry. The pigments spread less quickly into the light tone shape that I just created. To add some more texture to my fuzzy shape, I continue to add some dabs of strong red. Again, this colour spreads out much less than when the paper surface was completely wet. Leave the paint to dry completely before moving on. To add the details of the beak and the eyes, I use some white gouache. Gouache is water soluble like watercolours, but it's much more opaque. For the colour of the beak, I just mix some yellow watercolour with the white gouache. Then using pure white gouache I painted the eyes and a few dots on the body to add some more texture. Do the same thing for the second bird, then mix up a dark grey colour. I just used a fairly strong mixture of Payne's grey to add some feet to each bird. As a final touch, add the pupils to the eyes. I think this is a really fun painting idea which exploits the wet on wet characteristics of watercolour beautifully. Try to play around using different colours. You can have fun making all kinds of different fuzzy creatures. This next idea involves quickly painting a series of horizontal lines, then joining the wet lines together with dribbles of paint and water. Because the process happens while the paint is still wet, 
the different colours merge, creating interesting blends of colour and texture. Again, start by fixing down your sheet of paper onto a board. Then choose six colours to paint your lines. I used pure colours from my palette, which I knew would create brightly saturated results. The colours I picked were Hansa Yellow Deep, Pyrrol Scarlet, Phalo Green, Phalo Blue, Kinacridone Rose and French Ultramarine. Think about where you're going to apply the lines before you start to paint, and if needed, use a pencil to draw a few evenly spaced guidelines. Note that I left a bigger gap at the bottom of the sheet so that there is room for the drills of paint to flow down the page. Also, I used a flat three quarter of an inch brush so I could paint thick lines of colour quickly. The whole idea is for the paint to remain wet so you can get the colours to mingle together. Load your brush with a strong mixture of yellow paint and apply a nice wet line across the top of the page. Rinse your brush well, then move down to paint the red and green lines underneath. Reload your brush with paint to make sure the lines are very wet. Next, take a small round brush, dip it in water and use this to paint a few random vertical brush marks downwards through the coloured lines. The different colours will begin to blend across the thin vertical lines. To boost this process, tilt your board upwards and use gravity to encourage the drips of paint to flow down the sheet. Pick up some more water with your small brush and dab the top of the vertical dribbles so you get even more drips running down the paper. Paint the next three horizontal lines using nice wet brush marks, then tilt the paper upward again and repeat the process of making vertical dribbles. Use plenty of clear water on your brush so you get all the colours to drip down the sheet and mix together. Now you can leave the paint to dry. As the coloured pigments settle they create an attractive random blend of diffused colours, typical of the way watercolours flow when they're wet. This idea can be applied to all kinds of different patterns and colour combinations. This next painting idea makes use of the way brush loads of wet watercolours and water blend together within a defined shape. This is actually an easy way to experiment with a number of watercolour techniques and effects, including variegated washes, graduated washes, watercolour blooms and backgrounds, and charging in. I'll explain each process a bit at a time. Begin by sketching a series of imaginary bugs on a large sheet of watercolour paper, then tape down your paper onto a board. Start painting the first bug shape using a strong mix of bright paint. By the way, you can get a list of all the colour combinations I used for this painting by following the link below and downloading the worksheet. Before you completely finish the shape, pick up a new colour from your palette and start painting the other side of the bug. The two colours will diffuse and merge together. Combining colours in this way is a technique for producing a variegated wash. In other words, a coloured shape with a variation in colour appearance. Continue painting your bugs using the same method, starting with one colour, then switching to another colour before you finish filling in the shape. Because both paints are in a state of wetness, they will merge together to produce a smooth change in colour appearance. If you need to blend the two colours more smoothly, blot your brush to remove some of the moisture and use the damp brush to move the pigments around and get a more even distribution. Some of the insects that I drew included wings. I painted the body of these flying bugs in the same way as before, but for the wings I wanted a lighter toned appearance. To do this I simply rinsed my brush and painted the wing shapes using clear water. Because the paint of the body is still damp, the colour spreads into the damp shape of the wings and produces a gradual progression of colour from darker to lighter. This is in effect the watercolour technique known as a graduated wash. This creates some beautiful results, but in some places you can see another effect occurring. For example, on the last wing shape for this blue bug, I used too much water on my brush. This excess of water floods back into the coloured wash, creating a feathered texture, which in watercolour painting is known as a back run. This is sometimes considered a mistake because the watercolour isn't completely controlled, but as you can see, it's also a nice way of creating interesting textures. In other places I painted the whole of the shape in one colour, then I came back and dabbed the wet paint after picking up a second colour on the tip of my brush. 
As a result, the two colours merge with each other. This is another wet-on-wet -wet technique called charging in. Continue painting the rest of your bugs using a combination of different methods. Play around adding brush loads of paint or water at different stages to see what results you get. Don't worry if the paint does weird things. Just try to observe when things happen. For example, is the surface of the paper too dry for pigments to fuse together smoothly? Or is your brush too full of water or overloaded with paint, causing blooms or backgrounds to occur? Noticing under which circumstances these things happen will help you to learn more about the way to control watercolours. The only rule to remember is that moisture will always travel from a wet area towards a less wet area. The outcome of this creates all kinds of interesting results. As a final touch when the paint was dry, I added the legs, antenna and a few other details using a permanent ink Pigma Micron pen. Each of these painting ideas makes use of the unique and beautiful characteristics of wet watercolour. When your brush marks are really wet and when the coloured washes flow into each other mixing on the paper, for me this is one of the most fun things about watercolours. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button below to be alerted whenever I release something new. Also, if you'd like to receive some free watercolour lessons that I only share with my newsletter subscribers, follow the link underneath this video to sign up.